Greetings, R. Smalik here. Welcome back to my reflection video for Surviving Mind Crack Island. Uh, as you can see, I am in the location of the latest immunity challenge. This was uh, equivalent to Mind Crack Episode 3 and my day, what I'm calling Day 4. Uh, spoiler warning. I will be talking about things that occurred up to this point in the competition. So if you have not watched the official video on the Minecraft channel or my points of views from days three and four, I would say go do that now. There's a lot of really cool, interesting stuff that happened. Okay, so that out of the way, a really quick note on what we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about my video schedule, a quick recap of what happened in day four. And then this episode, I'm going to spend some time talking about what I noticed in other people's point of views in the competition. I'm going to give you an update on my hit list, do some shout outs, and then we're out of here. So we're going to try to keep this one shorter. <clears throat> so first off, the video schedule. Uh, the Mind Crack episode three was aired on March 25th. That covered two days. Day three was a reward challenge. And day four was the immunity challenge and the council. I broke that up into two sets of episodes. So on my point of view, day three, which was the reward challenge, aired on March 25th. And a reflection video on March 26th for that as well. Uh, yesterday, my day four aired. That's the immunity challenge you see behind me. That was on March 28th. And today, this reflection video. So... Uh, for one Minecraft episode three, this is my fourth of four videos for that. Okay, the next Minecraft episode will be called episode four, and that will start with what I'm calling day five, and those will air together at 3 p.m. Central on April 1st, April Fool's Day. Uh, I'm not planning to joke around with this particular series. Okay, so let's move into a very quick recap of day four or the immunity challenge that uh, you see behind me. I called it CT Emeralds uh, or Diving for Emeralds. Basically, my team and the blue team had to uh, go down underwater. And I actually have not gone down underwater at all. Um, but I do believe that this map that I'm in uh, is was created prior to them hiding all the chests. So even if I go down there, I don't think you'll see everything that they saw. Uh, but this is the zone. Now I sat out for this challenge, so I really didn't uh, contribute much. However, I do feel that my time, goodness gracious, I do feel that my time was very well spent because I got to uh, finally sit and just talk with Brian MCN or Lorgon111, Dr. Brian. Um, and we actually kind of had a little bit of bonding moment. So I think this was actually a very good chance for me to kind of learn his voice, pick it out from everyone else's. Uh, on our team, meanwhile, 3-2, uh, Van, Suchel, and, uh, and uh, Desi were swimming around, and quite honestly, 3-2 crushed the competition. He brought back all the emerald blocks, I think except for one, which I think I such a brought. Uh, and the blue team only had like one or two blocks before we crushed them. So uh, we went back to the island and we did our um, we did our nightlife and our hanging around at camp while the blue team uh, basically went to council. And as you should have already seen, uh, Zuljin was voted out. So the blue team is now down to three players uh, after this episode. So not much more I can say about that. Uh, the night fighting uh, after their council was was uh, incremented. You know, mobs were spawning. We were trying to stay alive. But at this point, the red team was on a roll. We were pr feeling pretty good about ourselves. All right, so let's move on to talk about videos from the other points of view. And uh, I didn't realize until yesterday that this parrot behind me is actually the one featured in the official intro video. So that's just a random bit of trivia. Um, but the first video that I watched, and all the links to these will be in the description, was Honey Plays Day 2. Now this is from last 
week, uh, last week's sessions, uh, she had put the video out after I did my commentary, but I did want to say uh, that her video was a really good reminder of us spending time in the bedrock boxes. Uh, when I say the bedrock boxes, in between each of our events and going back and forth between the island, uh, they would teleport us all into another world. These were all. This was a multi-world server, so all these were separate worlds, and that world was basically bedrock boxes. Uh, and we were all trapped within a certain area. In fact, there were red and blue wool blocks on the wall. And when they were getting ready for us to do something, they would tell us to line up against the wall. And we got to a point where we actually were like, I joked, at trained monkeys. Uh, as soon as we got TP'd into that box, we would just go jump up on our wool block and stand against the wall for what could have been minutes, what could have been hours, uh, depending on what point in the competition we were at while we waited for the Minecraft guys to organize, put things in the right place, do last minute tweaks to different things, etc. Uh, so we probably spent over, I think, uh, and, and I'm going to say the 23 hours. Um, when I say that, I want to remind you guys that that includes the people who got voted off as well as the people who made it to the end. Uh, because even if you got voted off, at some point you became part of the jury. So you got to stick around and uh, you were needed at the end to vote in the final vote. And also we stuck around because we wanted to see, uh, and I say we generically here, we wanted to see what would happen and we wanted to kind of you know listen in when they came back in bedrock, bedrock boxes without influencing them. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not... When I say we stuck around, that doesn't mean I got voted off. It doesn't mean I stayed to the end. It just is a term that I can use. I guess I should say the contestants. Uh, I was one of the ones that stuck around for whatever reason. And so even for me, it was 23 uh, or so hours. And my whole point in saying that is that about 50% of that time, so probably about 10 or 11 hours was just standing around in bedrock boxes waiting. And uh, the rest was very stressful competition. So we never really knew. Uh, and we, we should have known from the beginning that everything we do on the island was part of the competition and influenced the final thing. But we never knew what we could do, what we couldn't do, when we were breaking the rules, when we weren't. So we had to be on our toes the whole time. And that's exactly how they wanted it to be. Okay, so Honey's Day 2 reminded me of that. Uh, her video is, is and, and the Reddit and um, our videos are starting to get comments about the amount of conspiring. And I will admit, I like adding to drama. So I'm going to encourage you guys to comment on who you think is colluding with who, for what purpose, and is it successful. Um, I was really looking forward to her video to see if the three players on the blue team, uh, meaning Dyer, Honey, and Darkfan, had offline conversations that Zul'jin, Amlop, etc. couldn't hear, uh, or they decided to vote someone out, because the voting seemed extremely one-sided. And from what I can tell in Honey's video and in from talking to her now after the fact, finally, um, she she states, and I believe her, that they didn't really get a chance to, to collude or uh, they didn't really get a chance to gang up on anyone in this uh, up to this point. Uh, they just voted based on uh, their friendship. So the three of them had a prior relationship coming into this series which is now publicly known and stated, so I can state it, and they were not going to vote each other off. So basically in, uh, you know, in this particular case, the, the CTM Diving for Emeralds uh, challenge, they were gonna vote Zuljan off because they weren't gonna vote for each other, even if Honey or Dyer uh, were the player that contributed least. Um, it just wasn't going to happen, and they didn't even have to collude on it. They just kind of had that unspoken pact. So as far as scheming, there was no scheming in Honey's videos. Everything was played 
Uh, I would say more by the heart than by the head, but you can be sure that people are keeping note, meaning people, meaning contestants, are keeping note of who is playing smart and who is contributing. And at some point, I do hope that they will have to vote each other off. Okay, so <clears throat> then I watched the official episode three. And uh, in in that day three, that was our parkour reward challenge, which I did really well in, I thought. And I didn't I knew that our lane was different than the blue teams, but I didn't realize that our lane was different than the other half of the red team. So what I was jumping on was different than what three two was jumping on. And I thought maybe it was slightly different, like maybe I had ice blocks in a different place than him. But he actually had fence post jumping instead of ice jumping. And his sand portion was entirely different than mine. Uh, and I didn't really realize it until I got to see the official point of view. I didn't realize how different it was. So I feel like he actually had it tougher because although I was jumping on ice, uh, fence block, fence post jumping has a much smaller footprint. And uh, I know exactly how he feels when they got turned around because it was con it is confusing when you're parkouring in a lane and you're turning around and you're turning left and right and back and then you're trying to do it over again, how easy it is to get few confused and go backwards. So we won. That's all that matters. But I do give 3-2 a lot of credit for doing really well on that challenge as well. Uh, also in the official episode 3, uh, I came to know the name Yoshito Mario. Apparently that is a Minecraft YouTuber. I've never heard of him before up to today, March of 2016. But he was supposed to be in the competition if we had done it a week earlier. Uh, but because the authentication servers were down, the competition got bumped to September 29th. And he wasn't available. And so Dire Dwarf subbed in for him. And it would be really interesting to get a short interview with Yoshito Mario and just find out a couple, you know, things like, has he been watching the competition? Does he think he would have been better or worse? What team would he have wanted to be on? Uh, or if he was on the blue team in uh, everything else being equal in Dire Dwarf's spot, would he have voted any differently? Would that have changed anything? I'd love to hear somebody interview Yoshito Mario. Um, also, I noticed that Good was using a texture pack that makes his hotbar transparent. So it looked like this. Whoops, sorry. It looked like this. Instead of like this, it looked like this. But you could still tell when he held items in his hand that they were showing up down below. Uh, so random bit of trivia that I noticed. And um, then I watched Honey's Day 3 Part 1. And uh, I felt bad for her again because when she goes into the jungle, it is super, super dark. I think she had her brightness settings down on moody instead of on bright. I thought she fixed that in an earlier episode, but it was really dark again. And then uh, she commented on something that was happening to us uh, in the parkour bit. There was a, a tiny bit of server lag. And so when you jumped on a block pushed by a piston, and then the piston retracted. Uh, sometimes when you landed, it would actually pull you backwards. So you'd be, um, let's say I jumped onto this block here and it looked on my screen like I made it and then I jumped off. But what actually would happen was I would jump and the piston would retract and I guess I would miss the block and it would just pull me back a little bit. Uh, you can kind of see it in the video, but it's maybe hard to tell unless you're actually doing it. But there was this bu bug, this laggy bug, where you would jump and then you'd get pulled back a little bit and you'd actually miss your block. And she uh, brought that up in her episode, which uh, I fully support that that was definitely happening to all of us. Uh, and then I watched Honey's Day 3 Part 2 where we got to see more bedrock box action and it was really funny that she got friend zoned by desi if you don't know what that means go check it out it was really funny i watched i suchel's uh point of view and he actually had come up with the great idea of stealing the final boats out of the dock uh, that desi and i eventually used to go sail around and take a look at the blue side of the island 
And I was surprised to find out that Good was not only the host of Surviving Minecraft Island, but he was also doing interviews, and he did I Suchel's interview. So that guy never had a moment to sit and take a break. He was constantly busy uh, for those whole 24 hours or whatever it was. <clears throat> then I watched Vaughn's episode, and uh, most of what I saw I had already known. But I will say that Vaughn used the original uh, CGI intro in his video. And that was something that was um, commissioned by Mindcrack from a guy named Cassanus Plays and a musician called Thy Demented. But after all the legal stuff, uh, they were not reachable or not agreeing to the original terms or something. I, I actually don't want to get into the negative aspects of that, uh, but the entire intro had to be redone. And then finally, Cassanis plays a couple days ago, told us that we were, we were welcome to use the uh, original intro that he created. And so Vaughn put it in his video. I think it was really cool. I think the timing was a bit off. Like not all of the contestants got represented the same amount of time. Some of us just had... Uh, like a close-up of our face as we turned our head and some people had action shots uh, It wasn't spoilery because that was created before we even started the competition um, Or well, maybe it was created right afterwards, but Cassanis had no idea what Actually occurred so there wasn't any spoilers in it But anyway Vaughn used that footage and I think it's pretty cool to see it and then he actually had some audio corruption so he had to use uh, audio tracks from like Suchel's videos uh, or Brian's or my videos and mixed it in really well. I mean, you can tell when it happens, um, but instead of giving up and throwing away his footage, he went the extra mile of editing. So I wanted to say, Vaughn, thank you for uh, your extra work on that. And then I got to see Lorgon 111's videos. Now he doesn't have as much and I, I think that's actually a good thing, meaning he's not showing the same content that all four of us are showing over and over. Uh, he mostly is showing behind the scenes stuff and he didn't have a lot of disk space left, so he didn't record a lot. Um, but first thing I noticed is that he had a rather dashing, handsome thumbnail on his video. And uh, he also showed some footage of us goofing around in the bedrock boxes. And then there was one part of conversation that occurred uh, between us, I think, on the island that I, I, I knew it happened and I was part of it, but I completely forgot it. Even in watching my own point of view, editing, maybe I edited it out after all these years, I can't remember. But when I watched his video, it really stuck out to me that the, the age range on the red team. So Suchel, I Suchel, he's wearing Santa Claus skin. He's actually, he was, sorry, at the time of this, back in 2013, 18 years old. And the other five of us were ages ranged from 32 to 39. So it was really interesting to me that, you know, five out of six people on the red team were all above the age of 30 when this was filmed. And I think the blue team was probably all in their 20s, maybe some in their 30s, but... Uh, I just thought that was a very interesting thing. Okay, so that was a lot of me talking while me just walking around doing nothing. Let's talk about my hit list. That is, who, if I were playing this again today, and if I had visibility to all the point of views that I do in filming these reflections, would that change who I was planning to vote for, etc.? And at this point in the game, after day three, uh, sorry, after day four, after episode three, after the third immunity challenge, uh, all of the red players are still in and we're down to only three blue. So of those remaining players, I think the most dangerous to me personally, although I didn't realize it at the time, was Lorgon 111. And secondly, uh, I would actually say it's probably Dire Dwarf over on the blue team. Now, the reason for that, uh, because I had not interacted with any of the blue team yet, so, you know, as of the, the filming of this episode, I had, uh, of the day four episode, I really had no idea who was who on the blue team. Um, but if you remember some of the points of view videos from uh, 
when Amlop was voted out and when Old Man Willikers was in, Dyer uh, actually was having some conversations with people about like, you know, hey, if it comes to it, we're going to have to have a conversation. We're going to have to vote out. Like he was starting to think about who should be voted off long term, not just who is doing good or bad in the current challenge. I think Honey was very much focused on, oh, I did bad. I did good. She was focused on herself. Dark Fan, you don't get to see a lot of what he was thinking, but he seems to be a contributor. And then, um, you know, the other guys were eliminated. So I think of the blue team, I think Dyer was actually getting pretty dangerous. Uh, and on the red team, I think Vaughn, who I thought was dangerous, Vaughn was at the top of my hit list back then. Now I'm watching him, he does a lot of talking and he does some smack talk. So I thought socially he was actually uh, the most well-known and he was a risk to me. But actually kind of watching this, I think he's in more in the middle of the pack uh, in terms of danger to me. So I think the top of my hit list now, if I were to do this all again, with all the knowledge I have up to day four, it would be Brian, then Dyerdorf, then Vaughn, then maybe Dark Fan, or because I again I feel like Suchel and Desi and Three Two and I were all pretty good. We weren't going to really be threat to each other yet until later in this competition. Okay, now we're going to give some shout outs and uh, I'm going to show you two screen captures of their comments. They're kind of uh, they're kind of grouped into two parts. One is just people giving encouraging. Uh, encouragement to me or just asking simple questions and then some were more focused on who voted who and what strategies were so thank you guys uh, for commenting I will let you guys go and take a look at my uh, day three and day three reflection videos and you can see my answers to those comments there but shout out to these people uh, and I think that's gonna be it for today so uh, Again, next uh, next Friday, the April first, April Fool's Day, will be episode five, uh, episode four of the official Mind Crack, and day five for me, and then followed by my reflections. And um, in the meantime, I encourage you guys to go check out the Mind Crack subreddit and discuss or leave comments in my video. I'd love that too. Uh, you know, what you're seeing, what was done well, what, what could have done better, who I should look out for, anything you think I should know, who do you think is going to win. Uh, typically on Wednesdays, they put up a poll on the Minecraft subreddit of who's going to get voted out the next week or what's going to happen. And I think uh, I think it's it's a lot of fun. At least the contestants are following those things. And we're getting a big kick out of what you're interpreting from the footage versus what we know is about to happen. All right, that's it for this video. Um, let me know also how I can improve these because I want these to be digestible, not too long. Um, and also interesting for you guys because I am getting a kick out of it, but you guys are my audience. Thanks to everyone who's new to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, etc. And we'll see you in April.